and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Johnny B, but together we are... Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. Advantage. Oh, how many times have you said that, John? Too many. Hundreds. Not not too many, mate. Not too many. Oh, never, never too many. Never Sorry. too many. Pol so what we got today then, Jay Bizzle? <gasps> Looks like another starter army. Look, says it there on the front. Starter army. Bolt action. Fallschirmjäger. What a, what a great word that is. Fallschirmjäger. Yeah. It's very, very German, isn't it? Falling. It sounds German military stuff. Falling from your shirt. Falling hunters. <laughs> Falling hunters. The Jaeger. Jaeger, Jaeger means hunter. Yeah, let's let's get these boxes open. Let's do it so that these people can see the stuff inside. Right? Boom. Man, I just wanted to say something about the box art on this. I don't normally talk about it. Are you liking it? I don't know. Well, yeah, yeah. And I'm interested to see what this game does with it. But it's it's always the guy with the Panzerfaust. There's something about the way you hold the Panzerfaust that looks a bit derpy. It just looks like. It's point, it pointing upwards. It's like, no, mate, aim it. Aim it. <laughs> yeah, you sort of aim in it. They sort did, of aim in they it. They did put the sneaky Just... tater masher dude in there. Oh, yeah, he's in there, look. He yeah. made the cut. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, Falschimiega. So, late war Falschimiega, dangerous, mate, because you've got to do that uh, splinter camouflage, ain't you? Yeah, can't see him. <laughs> can't see him. <laughs> oh, gone. Camouflage uniform. Anyway. So, they're expensive units. <laughs> So, mate, what, what, is it, what does it say we're going to get? Before we go any further into the details, this yep. box set contains 1,500 points of elite okay. German airborne troops. Because they're all veterans, mate. It's not millions of models, it's just they're all veterans, isn't it? True fact. Okay. There's a lot of models. Uh, so, I've got a list here. I'm going I'm to attempt Johnny to Johnny B's German. Out. This could be what? fun. I'm not even going to attempt that name. You've got a lieutenant. All Oberleutnant. Right. Yeah, Oberleutnant. Yeah. Sounds like some sort of ointment. Uh, there are <laughs> two extra riflemen. You get a Falschmjäger squad, late war, 10. That's great. It's mm -hmm. even listing the weapons that you should give them there. Yep, and the points you, value. Yep. Uh, let's have a look down. You get three squads of Falschmjäger. Three 10-man squads. Yes. Get yourself an 81mm mortar because... Every, know, every bolt action army should have one of them. Why wouldn't you? Panzer Shrek team, mm. flamethrower team. Every Ooh. ball action army does have one of them, but not us. Not us. We don't. We don't. We don't like the rules for we, it. We're not going down with that. Uh, sniper team, awesome. Um, you get a pack forty. Nice. And then you get oh, here two we vehicles. Go. Two vehicles. One to half track. A plastic SDKFZ two five one out of D half yeah, track. The half track. <laughs> yeah, half track. And a Stug 3, Aus G. Nice. Very nice. That was only regular, mate. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute, eh? That's, that's, that's a veteran. bit cheeky. Yeah. All right. Anyway, you boys had enough of this. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. I'm saying, boys, and ladies watch this channel too, right? For sure. Absolutely. Right then. Oh. Oh. You're getting it all out. Mm. Is it all right? Yeah. Check the vintage. Very nice. Not bad. Check the vintage. All right. Do, 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 do. Who packed my box? Who hacked your box? Who packed my box? Well, sir, mine was packed by... Mirella! <laughs> I'm just going to assume mine was packed by the same. It, it, yeah, but it's obviously packed by Mirella. Mirella seems to pack everything over at wall. All of it. Right, a few bits of bases there. Where do you want to start, John? Um... Let's do, do you want to do the metal or the plastic first? Metal is always nice to do metal, first because it's different, metal, isn't it? Then. Okay, so I'm picking the first baggie so, out. What is your first baggie, uh, sir? I'm going to say it is the Panzer Shrek and the Flam there for teams. Okay, okay. Right, so the first pack we got here then, it's got three of the yeah. two-man teams. Oosh. What What do you want to talk about first, John? Uh, let's have a look at the sniper. The sniper. Let's have a look so at we're reckoning it's these two guys. So one of them has got his right his his ninety eight K, it's got a scope on it, it's wrapped, he's looking through some binos. Yeah. And he's got a head with the uh, scrim on it. So I reckon he's the sniper. He's the main man. He's the main guy. Yeah, he's an he's a nice looking skull. Proper pictures. It's nice to see a sniper that's not firing. Yeah. Almost all yeah, sniper models all are firing. Fire. This one this one's doing what snipers mostly do, which is thinking about what he's gonna shoot yeah. next. Yeah. Who's out yeah. there? Who am I going to shoot? And I assume the other guy that goes with him... Oh, yeah, it is a scoped these, rifle. Probably. Is it scoped? You said he thought he might be pressing a clip in, but I think he's got a scoped rifle just behind his hand. He's laying down, yeah. And he's like lying he's down. clicking the, the doofers. Yeah, he's maybe adjusting the scope or something. Now, there's two heads on a little a little sprue that come in this, and I think he's going to be the one with the scrim on it, right? 
because he's a camouflage yes. dude. Yep. Yeah? Yep, yep. Um, so it may actually be, although his rifle's not covered in the same way. Yeah. But they're, they're a nice little two-man team. So then the Panzer Shrek team. Boom. So this is this is the, the Germans, they capture a bazooka and they're like, we need one of these. Um, you get a gun shield for that, or a blast shield, more accurately. <laughs> I thought <laughs> Which... that was a bit of flash. No, 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 no don't lose mm, that. You've got a blast shield on it. I'm guessing um, it goes in front of its face. Yes, absolutely. I'd look at a picture to find out exactly where it goes. There are some, um, some guides on the barrel, but whether it goes in front or behind that, I would look at a picture online to double check. Definitely in front. And then the guy, there's a guy with him who's got all the anti-tank stuff, right? He's carrying oh, both it, of them's rifles. He's got an anti-tank mine at his belt, and he's got a spare Panzer Shrek round ready to go. And he's like, mate, this guy, is he's the carrying dude. He's got the mine, he's got everything. He's even got both I mean, of the water on him, he hasn't. <laughs> no. But no. he's, yeah, he's kitted out. He's got his mess tin and his water bag on the back, yeah. And then uh, everybody's favourite, the Flammenwerfer team, right? Which is mental. Yeah. It's just a tube, man. It's just it's a just, tube. Just a tube. Just yeah. a tube. Absolutely. With the flam. But he's got he's got goggles. Yeah, that's kind of He's got cool. goggles for yeah. the smoke. Not that he's wearing them. No, no. But it, should he need to? He has to? the option. Yeah. He's got that option. And then he's just got a, sort of a dweeb with a rifle it's hanging nice. out with him. Yeah. It's nice that they thought of PPE back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but these are not army sculpts. These are all different sculpts, different poses from the army. They're all wearing Falschmjäger uh, outfits. Um, I, I love the fact that even to the end of the war, the German Falschmjäger are wearing jumpsuits. Just in case, mate. <laughs> Just in case we'd suddenly decide, right, you guys, out of, out of the line and in that plane... <laughs> is it not, is it not just them. because they're, they're struggling to get, I don't know, pants... And other oh, clothing these, items. These uniforms are much more expensive to produce. Get their money's worth out then, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of the models you're going to see have got smocks over the top of it, but they've definitely got the kind of... Uh, there's like um, almost like a, an armless and legless baby grow that goes over there, over <laughs> their, their suit, which is very much the paratrooper look. Yeah. Um, and they're usually in, in different colours. It's quite distinctive. Um I don't, I don't, I don't know why that is. Whether it's extra insulation or something, you know, it's probably quite cold in a transport plane. Yeah, whether it just out. helps with the old harness going, you know, under your vitals so the strapping doesn't chafe. That's <laughs> just a little bit of an air barrier. Yeah, between yeah, you. maybe. Maybe I don't know. might just be styling it out. Just styling it out. Absolutely. Should we have a look in the next <laughs> yeah, bag anyway? Um, now you, we have two different philosophies on these, don't we? Because you like all your dude bros separate. Whereas I tend to like I have my model mine separate. Yeah, yeah for sure. I like my two man teams on little forty mil round bases. Yeah, yeah. not not because um, I think I'm better than you. I mean, I know that, right? I don't need to think that. Well, no, the irony is that you still bitch and moan when they get blown up with hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because they're too close to one another. <laughs> exactly. Um, it just makes them look. Uh, I, I like the opportunity to have a bit more texture on a base. Yeah, and it's a bit of a diorama. A bit of a rifle well. riding around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even in in a small case like that. So we're gonna look at the medium mortar crew. Yes, please. Yeah. All right then. So I think <laughs> bolt action starter army. Uh, um, every bolt action army should include a medium yeah, mortar. That's, it that's may only standard. be one in six chance, but Doesn't matter, if mate. it hits, the fear. it kills things. Yeah. The fear. It's, it's such a cheap unit for what it does. Are right. you not getting a spotter in here? You're only getting three no, guys, you get so you're going to need to make your, your spot out the other. So the mortar is the same, yep. the, uh, the eight the eight centimetre mortar, and he got the three crewmen. Mate, one of these is a winner. I tell you, <laughs> I tell you, I'll tell you why he's a winner because literally he's found the magic uh, shell. He is so happy that he found that shell. <laughs> he's <laughs> like, Whoa, he got it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's proper fizzy he about the is fact happy. that he's reloading that. Um, so this guy's just just wiping a bit of ketchup off oh, his yep, off yep. his face because there's two of them ready to ram shells in here. Don't look at me hands. Saying shells, it's a mortar. They're bombs, John. Mortars fire bombs. Mortar bombs. Mortar shells. Mortar bombs. Really? Yeah, it's a bomb. I'm the bomb. You're the bomb. Um, and then this last bo bloke, he's got a coat on, look. He's like, mate, it's nippy out. This guy is like, yeah, I'm the boss. I get the coat. <laughs> I get the coat. 
coat because I'm in charge. I've got the binoculars and the coat, and you guys can just just schlep just, it in yeah, there. Yeah, schlep it. Pretty good All scopes. Right. Uh, cool yeah, work. nice. Look really different from the army one. Uh, you know, that's that's what's important. Yeah. Very distinctively, Falschimiega. It is what you think. And then we get a Falschimiega Pack 40. It says it's a Falschimiega Pack 40. Ouch. So let's hope that it's got... It's going to look exactly like the other Pack 40, I assume. But it might not. But it's also going to have a very different crew. So the Pack 40, uh, we get a photo of the bits. Um, you guys, you know how we feel about Warlord Metal Cannon. We're not going to labour the point. My barrel's already a little bit crooked. <laughs> Um, oh, it's just it... got that light wave effect in it. I like it. <laughs> you like it. Make as much effort as you can to get this straight before you glue it together. Be prepared to do a lot of swearing and and use a lot of super glue. But it will eventually go together and it will be fine. All those bits are there. But let's talk about the crew because they're... They're the unique point. They're the surely. unique bit, right? Yeah. Okay, so... What, well, we got four and they crew? Ah, oh, so we've got four crewmen here. Yeah. Uh, where do you want to start? Uh, let's start with Mr. Forage Cap. Mr. Forage Cap is like, the point oh, in. So we're over there, boys. We're yeah, well, he's an, he's an interesting crew figure because he can go just about anywhere, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. Like, you could use him as an officer. I like the fact that this model, because he's wearing a Forage Cap, but he's carrying his he's helmet. He's still got his helmet. Still got his helmet. Right, uh, he's carrying an MP40. He's pointing. Uh, he, you know, yeah, he could be a member of artillery crew, but he could easily be a Falschmiega officer yeah. or NCO with that with that kind of. Well, probably an NCO. I don't know whether officers would wear forage caps. Options they might do, but very versatile figure that one. So Next. he's obviously the lead. Then we've got one dude going, "Hey, come on, man, fire the gun!" Right. So he's yeah, he's part of the firing team, isn't he? Is he like fire? Maybe, maybe. I don't know whether he's the. Would you like load it? I think he's probably the gunner. Actually, thinking about what four poses we've got here, I think he probably is the man behind the gun. Oh yeah, yeah. That would be my guess. He's, he's the, the only, only one, one kneeling down, ready to pull, doing do something. Do yeah, I think he's the model guy you're going to use as the gunner. And then you got. So he's going to disappear behind the gun shield, essentially. Yeah. And you got cool. guy taking a charge out of. A, I think that's. Um, I think that's the charge. Is it, how does it work then? Because I thought it was just like you pull the slug out of the tube and put the shell in the doofer. Yeah, I, I think, I don't know for certain with a pack, f is it pack 40, isn't it? I think this one is, yeah. So, yeah, 75 mil round. It might not be, but usually the more powerful anti-tank rounds are the bigger guns, the two-part ammunition. So you've got a round yeah. and then you've got the charge. And this is, and usually charges come in bags like this yeah or well, tubes they come in tubes like this where there's a bag in it which isn't all that waterproof etc oh, right. which is why they're usually in in cases like this sweet i don't know enough about the pack 40 and it may be that there was like a supercharged round in the late war for penetrating the heavier tanks and mm. so forth so all, all of that other yeah, people know a lot more than me about this kind of thing but that looks to me like it well look at his pose he's like putting his hand in like he's going to pull something yeah, out he's if, if that was a round <laughs> if it was that long he's not getting it out well, if with you look one at his hand face, i reckon there might be some sort of squirrel or small oh, mammal in bitten. there yeah there's a scorpion in there oh, like, ah! <laughs> interesting I can see the um, the jump pants very good, specifically on that model quite clearly. You know, you're the, talking the, the about separation the, yeah, between like, the two different parts of his uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Quite clear there. All right. Um, uh, last dude. Last dude. He's just ramming the shell he's home, just, right? Shell home. Yeah. Rifle on back. Jobs are good. And um, yeah. My okay. rifle's bent on this so one. So the only thing I would say about these is I mean, it's, it's metal. Stuff gets bent. You bend it back, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. And so with these, is. The, almost all the weapon crews that you find in in um, in 28 mil is they're almost always carrying personal weapons, and I'm pretty sure if you're in the business of loading and firing a pack 40 at an enemy tank, you probably have taken a lot of your kit off and dumped it on the ground. Yeah, because it's the just going to get in the way, isn't it? But here, <laughs> but you're here. on the you're on the front line with artillery. Yeah, oh, that's true. You. Yeah, yeah, you need that. You, you need, need that, that rifle. I'm not saying he doesn't need it. I'm just saying why isn't leaning against the <laughs> box somewhere close by. Um, but yeah, that's a big old gun. Yeah, so, so it's nice. It's nice that they've not just dumped an army one in here. Yeah. They've made. Um, I, 
as to whether this gun is a little bit different from the Army Pack 40, I can't actually believe that there's a paratrooper. There you, might be for, some sort of sprockety thing or... Well, it's the fact that it's such a big gun you couldn't parachute it in anyway. So that there's often you get adapted versions for jump infantry, yeah. but they're for things that there's they can no actually jump with. with. Right. <laughs> Whereas stuff like this, they just take army stuff usually. Fair um, but that, I can't guarantee that. So that's the metal. Okay. Uh, just to, to quickly say on this, uh, we've got three de decal sheets. Uh, if you've seen them, one is for the the half track, the S the two five one. One is for the Stug, and one is the um, the pouches and helmet badges and so forth. Cool. The teeny weeny. These are decals for your infantry. That's crazy. It's a commitment to do that. But um, you do it, don't you? Or did you um, paint yours? No, I put the decals on. You the, put the decals the on your British's. Fiftieth Northumbrian or whatever they are. Very nice. Uh, right, let's, let's just look have a plastic. little rummage and then we'll have a look at the plastic. Right, so right. we also get six sprues, each of six. Falchimiga. Sweet. So now you've got these plastic ones in your hands. Ooh. You can see what I was saying about the about the jumpsuit. Oh right, yeah, that's. You can see it really clearly. Not it's all like of they're them, wearing though. overshorts. Some of them seem to have over jackets. Some of them wearing smocks like... over the top. Yeah. Yeah. That's good that they've done that. Yeah, because that's that. But that's so that's very much a they late one. Just thing onesies, on right? That's what we're talking about. They're wearing well, there's, onesies. There's like a there's like a onesie underneath, and then there's. And then there's another bit that goes over the top, which comes to like the the elbow oh. and down just above the knee that fits over the top of that onesie. Oh. Which which is must have something then, to yeah, do with must have been the, the 1930s idea about what a parachute outfit would be like. Yeah. But I don't know whether it's just additional layering for the core because it's really cold that high up. Or, or something like that. It could be I as, mean, as simple as yeah, that. Yeah. Because um, I don't think modern flight suits look like that. Jumpsuits. Jumpsuits? They're just yeah. in the normal gear, aren't they? <laughs> Lock them out of the plane. Yeah, yeah, just wear a nice jumper on, keep you Sorts warm. Sorts of good. Right, so what? Uh, what's the vintage of this sprue we got here? 2015. 2015, so my modern one. So you, you can see some of that aspect in that most of it is... Uh, two parts um, weapon assembly. So you have one arm with a weapon molded in and another one attached to it. Yeah. It's my, that's my favorite combination is a lot of flexibility within that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even just having one arm with a, with Cause a, you can just tilt it up slightly. And, exactly. And yeah. Exactly. Um, and generally you haven't got too much to sort of match up the other side. <laughs> if you've, if you clip them all off the sprue, there are a few separate ones. So, um, the weapons that you've got on These here, got all the obviously toys. you've got MP40s, the Car 98s, but you've also got this, um, I think it's called the FG42. Fact. Um, now, this is interesting because I'm not sure what bolt action does with these, so I might have, a, have to have a bit of a cut and look at the bits of paper. What do they count So as? what this is, is a bit odd. <laughs> um, FG42 assault rifle, it says on the paper. It calls it an assault rifle. Yeah. Okay. So it was intended as a replacement as a, to the LMG. Really? To the MG34. It's much It's much lighter. These things are very expensive to produce. Um, it fires a much bigger round than an assault rifle. It fires rifle caliber ammunition at a pretty high rate of fire. I think it's more like the BAR than anything else. Yeah. But it's it's one of these sort of in between weapons. It's very expensive to manufacture, but they did issue quite a lot of them to the paratroopers because mm. there's kind of weight issues. And one of the things that's really interesting about German parachute doct doctrine is their weapons drop separately in containers. Really? They drop with a pistol and a knife, and then they have all to right, get so to their. Right, okay, that's all right. <laughs> That's all right. Maybe in Warhammer, mate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, then, plans for and then they've got to find the canisters with their weapons in. But American paratroopers seem to be able to drop with their weapons. I, I don't know how, how, how yeah. and why that was. I don't think you know the German rifle is so much heavier. Although the Americans, they drop with it kind of on a on it's a lanyard from their leg. Yeah, it's yeah. Not... It might have something to do with your weight at impact point. I, mean, I don't really know. 
why, but the Germans definitely dropped without their weapons and needed to find them. And the weight I mean, was that's a risky serious. business if you're dropping in hot, right? And all you've got is a pistol and, and a knife. Yeah. Let's go find them guns, boys! Yeah, Woo! yeah. But that, so that's one of the reasons paratroopers are extremely aggressive in their training. Because they've got to find that canister. They've got to win quickly because they're not going to beat regular units in any kind of extended fight. They're very limited access to weapons, very limited support equipment, very limited ammunition, yeah. very, very limited everything yeah, that you need just... to fight in a sustained way. So that, we're going to win this afternoon or, or we will lose. Yeah. Uh, Market Garden showing that uh, quite clearly. Yeah, uh, there's some pretty dangerous um, uh, situations on Crete where, um, you know, different dice have been rolled in, in oh, Crete. Really? It could have ended very differently. Yeah, because the Germans haven't made the progress they want to immediately, but they do make it overnight and the next day. And it's like, if we don't, then we've got real problems. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so... As, as well as those, you've obviously you've got MG 34s, which any German army will be com wouldn't be complete without. You've got a nice sets, like I said before, with the with some of the other kits, your bread bag and so forth. You kind of tackle on the back of the soldier. You've got various different yeah, sculpts. That's nice. And you've got a lot of different heads with very different, you know, forage caps, caps, helmets, helmets with uh, netting on. Really nice kit. Really, really nice kit. Yeah. That's good. Right right down to the Panzerfaust. Have you ever seen a Panzerfaust? Uh, yes. So what's interesting about that Panzerfaust, which I haven't realised, they're sculpted in the uh, the spare charges bag. It's actually part of the arm. It's like hanging underneath it. Oh. Because it's intended to be carried over the shoulder, yeah? Yep. So, so when you so pose the that, angle, yeah, he's going to have a bag hanging just here, yep. which has got some more rounds in it. That's Not interesting. Like that. I assume that's what that is. Don't know. I must be. A few loose entrenching tools. Really nice. Have you got another bag of like baguettes right next to the Panzerfaust? There's another arm, like a left arm, whereas the Panzerfaust is a right arm. With that bag. Yeah, it's for the right, same guy, sorry. right? Is that the same guy? So he's got like I think so. He's carrying loads of extra stuff. You think baguettes? And charges. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, in terms of the pouches, you see these up here, I think these are... The, the pouches do look different for the different weapons. So it's always worth checking on a bit of paper mm -hmm. precisely what pouches. But generally speaking, they've got rifle pouches on most of their infantry. They'll sculpt rifle pouches on the models, generally. Although in here, they, it looks like they haven't. But these are probably... Rifle ammunition pouches will be the small ones, usually. The these bigger ones. ones will be for MP40s, uh, I would imagine. I would imagine. And a nice belt of ammunition, of course, to wear around the neck for the gunner and Always. the loader. What better way to carry them sharp, sharp bullets? Now, that isn't the end of the Falschermiega Sprue. What? Because the bases have got a few extra little tidbits on. Well, he never. You've got so, a finger. You've got a tighty masher. Uh, yeah, point your finger, tighty masher. You've got a roll dot. Loads of Zelt extra. barn. Um, a pistol. Um, and uh, is that a bread bag or a map case? Yeah. That's probably a map case. And then you've got this really distinctive paratrooper ammo pouches. So are they These intended things, to yeah, run Yeah, they, they run across the front. And they, you only get those with paras, I think. Or they're only issued to paras. Yeah. Are they just flapping around then? No, no, no. They're, they're strapped to them. But that probably follows. The shape of this will follow the contour of the of the model, I would imagine, mm. in most cases. Um, there may be some more direction. And you, your lipped bases on there. But it's nice that they've added those few extra bits. So whether it was... Uh, it's not It's not like it's an afterthought, because these two things come together. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, but it's nice It's nice that they've included that. Sweet. So the German parents, there's an airborne invasion of Crete. Um, uh, this is kind of in that dark. There's the early parts of the war where we're just being overrun the land everywhere. Brand. Um, and we have a substantial force in Crete waiting to defend them. And because of Ultra, the Enigma code, we've cracked it. Oh. They even know that they're coming. They know where they're coming, what time they're coming. They just can't tell anyone. Because if they do... 
Because if the Germans Games start to realise we know what they're doing, yeah, then, they, then they'll start changing minute. their codes. So it, we're still working out as that, when do we use this, or probably best not do it now, because mm. um, then they'll know what we're up to. Okay. So they don't, although they have told the, they have the, the commander. Happen. Yeah, and, and the commander is an Anzac guy. <clears throat> he knows they're coming, but he's not deployed his forces necessarily optimally. Again, they're pretty... Get- the yeah, going. yeah. If they're like literally waiting for them at the at the landing points, it'd be a bit clear. <laughs> so, um, anyway, as part of the Crete invasion, the Germans do actually manage to occupy the airfields in the first couple of days. They fly in some mountain, tro- I think they're mountain troops, but they they come in on planes, and then some more sh- stuff comes over land, um, overseas. Mm. Um, once they're relatively secure in that, and there's a long retreat. The Royal Navy loot loads of ships to Stukas. It's another disaster, Ooh. another British retreat, and another hammering for the Royal Navy re- to deal with a retreating British army. Yep. It's retreating from Greece before it retreats from Crete. Oh, wow. It goes from Greece to Crete to then back Bouncing to Egypt. Oh, yeah, God. yeah, yeah. It's like, the guys, guys come from Australia to Egypt, to Greece, to Crete, back to Egypt, less a few of their mates. Crete, the Falchi Mega take relatively heavy casualties. I don't mean like 60-70% like in a war game, right. but more like 15% of elite infantry, very expensive, very expensively equipped, very long to train, mm. maintain. And the, the German high command, especially Hitler, come away from us and we're not doing that again. That was far too costly and wasn't worth it. Churchill looks at that and is like, we need an army that can do that. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. 15%? Well, because well, from acceptable. Churchill's perspective, this couldn't have been done without that. Well, from yeah, Hitler's perspective, true. this wasn't worth doing at that cost. Right. Two different, two yeah, very, different very different conclusions. So at that point, you've got all of these elite infantry. There's a highly motivated, highly aggressive infantry. What are you going to do with them? And, and they start upon them in North Africa as a parachute brigade used to stiffen the Italians and do some raiding and so forth. But then they create the Hermann Goering Panzer Division. Right. So this is a paratrooper infantry with tanks. What? They don't paratroop the tanks. The paratroopers of 1943 and beyond, 1942 even, they're essentially um, Panzer Grenadiers with different uniforms. And, 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 and a feeling that they're better. Because, yeah, they're in, they they're need another, to, they could jump out of a plane. Yeah, yeah, but they wouldn't get to take their vehicles with them. <laughs> um, so, like a lot of Panzer Grenadier units, the Hermann Goering Panzer Division does have first-line panzers, but the other paratrooper regiments are going to have Stugs. Right. Which is why this is going to be in there. Um, and Stug. indeed, in Normandy, there's a Stug battalion support. Um, I think it's 3rd Falschimierger. There's a Falschimierger division there. It's got Stugs. Stugs are, um, as as the war goes on, Stugs begin to take on roles that had previously been done by tanks, but there aren't enough tanks to fill the panzer divisions. Oh. So they start, they're like ersatz tanks. They can have a similar capability. So if you're not a tank division, you're not getting a tank after 1943. But you can have something that's nearly the same. It's got a big gun. Yes, tracks. it's got an anti-tank capability. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what Stug is. Um, this kit's been around for quite a long time. I think that this is one of the Italian ones. For sure. Um, you like can tell, I mean, it's you, you can tell the, the kind of the sprue plastic. layout. This is this is one of theirs. Um, and there's often quite a lot more options and separate wheels and things on the Italian ones. It's not uh, terribly complicated. And you've got the option, you've got the skirts on here, which you can choose to hide or whatever mess you make of attaching the tracks <laughs> that's always nice um so yeah Stug, really late wash dog really versatile uh, piece of equipment um, i'm just looking at the mantlet for the gun because that's one of the ways you can tell yeah so does it provide you with two mantlets i think it has it's got two guns. Got some instructions it's got two guns and it's got two mantlets Stug! Use part number 52 to build the Stug 3 Aus G from this kit. Alternatively, use part 53 to build the Stug 42. Right, so it's whether you build the howitzer version or the anti-tank version. Right, but it looks yeah. like it's only the one port to plug in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so that's going to let you do that. Uh, the Stug, yeah, nice model. Stug a Stug.
Then we got the 251D. So you can see the the um, the sprue is quite different. It's a very much a thicker plastic rather than that rounded plastic. Mm. I think this has been built from the ground up for war games purposes. Okay. Um, and I like that. And you can see that the tracks and running oh, gear mate, yeah, it's always all one, one piece. piece. They've got keying, uh, so you can do it. Now the keying is broadly the same. Um, it, there may be some slight variation in it. But the all of these components are much bigger. They're much chunkier. Um, not not the sprue gates though. This stuff you could pop out if you really had to. Um, so I've built one of these. Goes together very nicely. Yeah. And you also nice little touch. You should get four dude get bros four to sit dudes. on the back. Yeah, yeah. Now people like me who don't want to paint those four guys they sat in the well back. They happy. Tends to man, they're just chilling, aren't they? So I'm not sure about this guy though. It's like with his hand on, like, is he is he is he trying to touch the other guy's leg? Come sit over here. As, oh, he's like come come yeah, sit. Yeah, come me. sit near me. Come sit with me. Yeah. All right. Even got a couple of helmets to stick on the on the outside of the vehicle. A little bit of stowage. Nice. This kit went together very very easily. Really pleased with it. It doesn't come with. The pack 36, 37, which you do get with some of these kits. So this is just an APC. That's all it's it not is. an infantry fighting vehicle version, but really goes together quite nicely. In fact, if I find one, I'll even take a picture of mine. Sweet. So, mate, what do you reckon overall? I mean, it's I, another starter army. That's for another sure. starter army. I don't, I don't know what's missing from here. Well, the one thing that's missing is they didn't give you a HQ pack. So your commander and their subalterns or orderlies or whatever are going to look, they're going to be ex made from the same plastic sprues as the rest and with the same uh, number of poses. I don't think that's a problem when you're building one, but yeah. it is often nice to have a metal HQ team just so that, they, that they're not going to look anything like your other Yeah, adults. completely different. Yeah, if you're only going to buy the one. But Ooh. that is like an incredibly small That's a minor, uh, a minor criticism. Thing. Yeah, uh, and everything in here was in fairly good condition. This, as, as a veteran force, 1,500 points, that is a big game of ball action. That's a big-ass game of ball yeah, action. Yeah, you, still... you've got all the options that you would want. I think this is a cracker. 8 out of 10 for me. Yeah, that's cool, man. It's veteran, as you say, 1,500 points. Do it, mate. All, well, good, all of the numbers. That was our look at it. Thank you for watching. Bye. 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 So if you like bolt action and you're looking to start the system or start a new army, on our website modelingforadvantage.co.uk we have a range of the starter sets as well as a few of the starter armies. Do consider buying from us as a way of supporting the channel. Thank you for watching. Oh, they've gone and written it in German, like, you know, Urban and Veteran. That's gonna make the cut. <laughs> I've gone dizzy, man. <laughs> Three owls, gay. Owls? Sorry? <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> STD. <laughs> yeah, go on, you say it, yeah. an STD. Is that what I'm saying in German? Gay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I believe so, yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>